As you can see, I've done quite a few in this book. Oh, I'm going the other way. I'm almost done with it. I got it about, I'd say, maybe, I don't know, a month ago, three weeks. I don't know. Where's my pen? Crap. La la la. Okay. So, there's not many I haven't done in this book. What the hell? Let's just pick this one. What I like to do in this puzzle is I pick a number to start with. It doesn't matter. It's just whatever catches my eye, the first number that I see. So let's just go with the six. I'll go across. And when I mean across, again, just going to go draw an imaginary line to eliminate those boxes. So if the six is there, it can't be in these three. And contrawise, the six can also not be in these three boxes. So that means that the six is going to be right there. Six comes down, six comes across, and across right here. So that means that this comes down, this comes across, this comes across. Whoops. So I'm going to put a six right here and right here. Just as little notes that this six goes like this. So there's your first number, six. I would suggest scribbling that number out like that so you don't get confused. Therefore, you come across like this, this six comes across here, and this one comes up here, which means that I'm going to draw my six like that, which means that this new pair of boxes is definitely, one of these two is definitely a six. Okay. And then, okay, perfect. This is a great example. This six comes across like so, and this six comes down like this, which leaves these two boxes for the number six. That's perfect, why? Because if this column has to have the six down here, it has to have it right there. Even though you don't know which one it is, you can pretend that there's a six there, which means that this comes up like this as if there was a six, and that eliminates this box. This one can't be a six. If, these, if one of these two has to be a six, and this one can't be the six, because you definitely know it's down here, that means the six has to be there. Think about it this way. There has to be a six in this box, right? We know that it can't be in any of these other ones except for this one. So that takes care of it for the row. The row comes up like this, I mean for the column. For the column, it comes up like this. That's why it can't be there. Because between these two, it can't be there. That's where it is, okay? The nine comes up like this and across like that. The nine's gotta be between one of these two boxes. So also, if you look, the 9 will come up here, then this 9 will come across here, and just as you use the 6 to draw it up, you can draw the 9 as if you know where it is, as if you know where it is already. The 9 comes down right here, this 9 comes here, and across, so you've kind of got that right there. Um, this nine comes down, this nine comes across, so the nine will be in these two boxes. I draw really, really little notes. If the nine is in one of these two boxes, I'll put the nine, see how they're, they're kind of far from each other, they're not next to each other. But it does help, even though they're far, to know where they are. The two comes across, and this two comes up right here. So that means there's a two right there. And that will help to bring this two across, this two across. That means the two is gonna be in one of these two boxes. This two comes down, this two comes down, up, and this makes the two between. This four comes across here, like that. And this four comes up like that. 
which means that just like the 9 that comes up and across, the 4 comes up and across. So right there is a situation that we're really looking for. The 3, for example, comes up here, because there's one right there. The 3 will come up here. Since we know that the 3 can't be in these two, or any of these, obviously, that means that it'll be catty corner like that. 3 and 3. So, like I've said, for the most part, the 3 is going to be either here or here, just like it'll be either here or here. So we'll keep an eye on it. 4 comes down here, 4 comes across here, which means that's one of the most basic situations, usually in the easiest puzzles. That's the easiest way to find one. 4 comes across, 4 comes across, which means that these two are going to be a 4. The 4 comes down, up, which means that the 4 is going to be in one of these two. Or for this column, the 4 will come down, and this 4 will come up, so that means we can add another double box, note like that. The 4 has to be in one of these two, because it can't be in any of these three. It just can't. Get over it. <laughs> the four can't be in these three because it has to be here. Has to be, period, and a story. It comes up like this. This eight comes across like this. And this one comes down like that. It's pretty basic elimination of just like the simple one over here, or wherever it is that I did it. Which means that if one of these two is a four, and this one is definitely the 8. Then the 4 gets bumped up. That's just how you do it. If the 5 comes down like this, you know that the 5 has to be in one of these three. We don't know which one, so I'm going to write the 5 with an arrow like that. If the 5 comes down like this for this square, that means the 5 will come down as well and it's got to be in one of these three. One comes across like this, one comes up like this, which means that the one has to be in either this one or that one. Luckily, there's a seven that comes up and this seven that comes across just like the ones, so that helps me write it in like that. The one and the seven are definitely here. There's two boxes, there's two numbers. You can cross them out for being any other number. They can't be another number. So, when you see a number like this, for example, the five, it cuts across. So you've eliminated this box, this box, and now you've eliminated these two. So for my note, I'm gonna put the five like that because the 5 can't be here or here, and it also can't be in these two either, and obviously there. So that means the 5 goes right there. The 8 comes up, and since these two were eliminated from being any other number besides 1 or 7, that says I can put my 8 in these two, as a note. The 9 is going to be between these two. Since, since the 1 and the 7 are in these two, the 5 is in one of these two, the 8 is in one of these two, and the 9 is in one of these two, if we get one of these, what's going to happen is it's going to be like a domino effect. You get one number, and you get the other, 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 and that's how you quickly find out a whole square really fast. This 2 comes down, and since this 2 is here, it comes across. And you can put the two here and here. Sometimes if you make a lot of notes, the notes can run into each other. You just kind of got to have a little method. Some people write their whole note in the whole box because they use pencil. I never use a pencil for any of these puzzles because it's unnecessary and I think erasing is lame. <laughs> so, the two comes up like this. This two comes down like this. There isn't another two over here, so it's in one of these two.